Hey, it says we're broadcasting. Woohoo! Hello, everyone. Hopefully. Hi. <laughs> Hello. I wasn't ready yet, but that's okay. <laughs> we were just being very efficient. Well, it's 4 30. And, so. and by we, I mean Dave. <laughs> Dave is being very efficient. Yes. Well, I'm just, it's 4 30. What? Yep. <laughs> Hello, go, everyone. Dave. All right. Hello. I am Tara. I'm living on a dime. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Sorry. Are we actually live, or were you just messing? Yeah, we've been live. Yeah, we're live. Hello. Okay, I'll have to go in and do some editing. All right, guys, I am Tara from Living on a Dime, the author of the Dining on a Dime cookbook and the Gluten-Free, Dairy-Free Dining on a Dime cookbook. We are making dinner and chatting this evening. Um, so I am going to get started here. Um, let me see. What am I doing? Okay, so first I'm making my cabbage. Um, now, this recipe is not on the website yet, but it is in Dining on a Dime Volume 2. It is on page, let me look it up for you. It is on page something. What page is it on? Uh, let's see. Where'd it go? Hello? Did we leave it out of the index? Do you see coleslaw anywhere? Uh oh, were mistakes made? I think a mistake was made. <laughs> Hold on, I think a mistake was made. Hold on. <laughs> oh dear, was a mistake made? Okay, hold on. Let me see if I can find it. I didn't know you were making coleslaw on this. Oh. So I'm making um the savory coleslaw it is um you have sweet and then you have savory coleslaw this is a savory one i like it i've just been on a coleslaw thing lately so i was like sure what oh we must have taken it out it was supposed to be in here <sighs> did we take it out oh now i'm ticked at myself because i really wanted that in here why would I take it out? Okay. Well, anyway. Um, oh, no. It's right here. Page two, 207. 207. So if you have volume two, page 207. So you found it in the index? Mm -hmm. What was it under? Vinegar, not coleslaw. So we'll have to. Can you make a note of that? Dining on a dime, volume two. Right here. 207. Okay. Now, I'm not putting in the carrot. You can I don't know. I just didn't feel like it. Um, and, well, I guess I could. Do you want onion in it? Or no onion? Sure. Well, I mean, okay. I don't mind. Grab me you an know, onion, You Dave. know me an onion. Okay. Go ahead and zoom in. Okay. Your, your hair looks very nice, Tara. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I need to do my one-year hair, gray hair transformation update. I haven't done the one year yet. And I need well, to do that. I think it's aging gracefully. But oh, thanks, Dave. Dad, did you hear that compliment yes. he gave his mother? Is that just dye on the end? So that's the leftover dye from my hair. Come back up so everybody can see what we're talking about. Yeah. Pull, pull. yeah. Okay. So yes, this is the leftover dye right there. I didn't know dye lasted. My hair is actually not brown. My hair is actually closer to black. But I always dyed it brown because I didn't like my hair black. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> now the truth comes out. <laughs> the scandal has come out. The scandal. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But, Dad, he thinks I'm aging gracefully. Isn't that... I know. See, he's trying to smother me with compliments so that when Give Mom All the Kisses She Wants Day gets here on Sunday, he won't have to give her all the kisses she wants. 
Yep. I think that <laughs> is probably what we're trying to do there. Did I hear him say yep? Yep, he was willing to admit he it. Figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Dad, we love our boys in spite of themselves, don't we? Yep. Uh, <laughs> no carrot, living on the wild side. Yes, I'm living on the... Well, I mean, I could do carrot, but... We have the baby carrots in there. Well, I have regular carrots in there. I just... I don't know why I didn't feel like doing them today. <laughs> Isn't it relaxing to just kind of shave the carrot? I guess, but we can't get that inside grater shot, you know? Oh, yeah. That would be really cool. <laughs> Okay, get the onion in there. Now my grandma grates her onion. And actually I really like it grated and I should have done that, I guess. Okay, so then you've got your... The grandma that we see every week? Yes. Ah. So then you've got your oil and then you're gonna put in your vinegar, which I forgot to pick up and that's fine. And vinegar right there and then this is my homemade seasoned salt i do not waste money on store-bought seasoned salt because it's crazy expensive i can make this whole entire jar for like 10 cents so there's no reason to buy seasoned salt when you can make it homemade so then i guess i should actually follow the recipe but you know me um Okay, and then um, if you want, you can add just a little bit of mustard in here. I don't normally just because I forget it, but a tiny titch of sugar. Now, you guys are going to say, oh, gross, sugar in your coleslaw. Let me tell you, every single person who eats my coleslaw absolutely loves it, and our coleslaw is always the first one gone from any potluck, get together, whatever. You know what, I think I'm just going to go ahead and finish up this cabbage because there's not much left. Something smells awesome. Is that the onion? Yes. Does it smell awesome? Mike has an onion and garlic detector. Yes, you do. Well, onion is oh, you like onion, Dave? Well, yeah. I mean, I don't I like onions onion. by itself. But I like having the residual flavor on other things. <gasps> you do? I did not so know that. So if you put like, onions on a burger and then remove them before you eat them, it like leaves the onion residue on the burger, burger and then it tastes good. Ooh, see, I learned something about Dave that I didn't know, Dad. <laughs> well, that's why I get onions at McDonald's. So do you know how to get that flavor without the onion? Just onion seasoning. Onion powder, yes. Onion powder, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all you do. Okay, now, I like to let my coleslaw slaw sit for 30 minutes or an hour, and it kind of wilts down the coleslaw. And I like it wilty like that. You probably don't like it wilty, do you? Wait, like which way? When it gets a little wilty. Um, I mean, if it's got some crunch to it, then it's fine. It's, it's kind of like halfway between... Wilty and crunchy. Well, what you had yesterday? Yeah. That was fine. Okay. So he likes it then. Very it had good. enough crunch. Uh, Mike doesn't like soggy food, but. Mikey, he likes it. <laughs> oh, thanks. Think anybody got that? Yeah, all the old folks like us. <laughs> yep. All right. Now, we're coming over here, Dave. All right. Now, what we are going to do is I am turning on my pan. Now, uh, adding, now, you're going to say, Tara, why are you putting pancake syrup in your pan? And I will say, guys, I am not. <laughs> oh, wait, this is the wrong thing I'm doing anyway. I meant the bacon grease for this. Tara, where did you get that luscious looking bacon grease? And I would say, I save my bacon grease every time I cook bacon so that when I want to make something like fried potatoes, then I have all that yummy bacon goodness without having to mess with frying bacon. It's so funny. You see all these cooking shows and they fry the bacon and all that, but you don't have to do that. Okay. 
Um, all right, Dave, come back up while I Pick up two chat things. for a minute. Okay, so now while I'm peeling potatoes, I know this is kind of an awkward thing, but well, actually, let me show you something here first. So to peel potatoes. Oh, do I go right down? No. Oh. Save your cereal wrappers. Today is cereal wrapper day. Seriously? And <laughs> Oh, I was going to say what? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's living on a diet has, has, has made it cereal wrapper has, day. <laughs> yeah. cereal What's the word I want to use? I was going to say Christmas. Yes. Today really, is Christmas cereal wrapper day. Established it as cereal wrapper day. Take your cereal wrappers and I save them. I don't know if you can see in here. Can they see in here, right here? Not really. No. Right there. I have a file folder and I fold them in half. And then you can either use newspaper or a garbage sack or whatever, and then peel your potatoes on here and then just gather it up and throw it in the trash, okay? Now, I'm actually using my cereal wrapper for something else, but I'm gonna go ahead and peel the potatoes on it right now since Mike uh, is right here. And we can do some questions while I'm getting my potatoes peeled. All right. Questions, my love, or comments? Uh, well, there aren't very many questions. Uh, Tinny said, never heard of onion and coleslaw. Is that no, is that typically in our recipes? Well, it's in the book. It's in the recipe in the book. But, I mean, it just depends on... Now, this is a savory one, but, I mean, you can just make it however you want. It doesn't really matter. Coleslaw is one of those things where you can throw in things and take things out, you know. Like, I don't know. Could you put cucumber in there? Cucumber would probably be really good. Well, I'm sure it would taste great, yeah. I don't know, guys. Mm -hmm. What do you put in your coleslaw? I just always use I've never carrots seen. And, uh, and cabbage. I don't normally put onions in mine. I mean, I put it in the recipe in the book, but normally I don't put... Uh, I normally don't put uh, onions in mine, but I guess that's just because half my family doesn't eat onions. Sandal Phone 9 super chatted $20 and said, I just received Dining on a Dine books one and two. They're amazing. Great quality and extras. Thank you. Why, oh, thank you. well, thank you. I'm really glad you like them. Wow, that was super nice. <laughs> Very encouraging. Okay, so then we're going to cut these up into little pieces into our oil and we're going to start frying them. Ooh, Liz says, Liz Tech says, we love your coleslaw here at our house. Oh, thanks. So my other coleslaw is mayonnaise and sugar and it is just super delicious. That one is in volume one. Um, the vinegar one that I made today is in volume two. So it just depends on, you know, how you like it. Honestly, I've never had savory coleslaw until I married Mike and his mom made it and I really liked it. Oh, did you mention the, I was looking away at the comments, but did you mention the garlic salad? No. Oh, okay. Would you like to mention the garlic salad? Yeah, we have a recipe for garlic. It's called garlic salad in Dining One, right? Dining One? Yeah. one? It's the, the link is on the website. It is super yummy. It's kind of a, very garlicky uh, kind of coleslaw, which I just absolutely so love. So it's it. a knockoff from, um, there, was a, there was a restaurant in Wichita, Kansas called Spears that used to be really good. I don't know if they're still around or not, but it's a knockoff of that. And what you do is you grind up celery and carrots in the blender with water, and then you strain it, and you have this really fine baby food uh, type carrot and um, celery, and then you add, it has to be Hellman's mayonnaise. I think it's best foods west of the Mississippi and Hellman's east of the Mississippi or vice versa, <laughs> I don't know. It has to be Hellman's real mayonnaise and garlic powder and a little bit of garlic salt or just salt if you want. And then you mix all that together and you let it sit overnight. And oh my goodness, it is so delicious. Actually, that is, I have all the things. And that is my one of my next videos that I'm going to be shooting for five ingredient recipes coming up here oh. pretty soon. Michael put a list. 
Or a link, I mean, not a list. For which thing? Five ingredient recipes. Okay. Also, I did not find the recipe for that, those potatoes on the website. We don't have the roasted potatoes well, on the Well, they might be, but every time I Googled it or I looked it up on our search, it was bringing up roast with potatoes. Well, that's weird. I thought I had... Well, the roasted vegetables, are they on there? You could do that, too, if you want. Fried potatoes. It's not roasted. It's fried potatoes. Oh, sorry. That's my brain fart day. I'm sorry. <laughs> Guys, I've been having a I really... I wonder what that sound was. <laughs> Having a really rough couple of days. A uh, couple of weeks, probably. A <laughs> couple of weeks. Actually. Oh wow, these are the oh, yeah, this is the awesome fried potatoes. Okay, recipe. sorry, it's fried potatoes. I'm sorry, guys. Volume one, dining on a dime, and then on the website, fried potatoes. That's what this is. So I'm sharing the link in the I comments call. now. <gasps> Melissa says hi from the winner of your cookbook from Out of Goshen. <laughs> Love Woo! watching you. Hope you feel better soon. Yay! Well, I was just wondering about that. Did I mail that for them already? I didn't think I did. Or maybe they just announced it and I missed the announcement. <laughs> I don't know. I need to ask them about that. Did she actually get the book? Because I don't remember shipping it. <laughs> uh, so I didn't know if I was so losing Melissa, my did you, mind. You, you didn't receive it yet, did you or did you? I don't know. If so, then <laughs> you're really having a... <laughs> connection issues oh have mercy <laughs> my brain is just about ready to short short circuit yeah Tara's really not been doing too well the last couple weeks i slept 12 hours last night and then i uh went and had to take a nap today because i was so tired i was like man what is wrong with me okay so she says they just announced it today oh okay All right, so now we're going to let that cook. So they just announced it today. Okay, I thought I was losing my mind there for a moment. I'm glad I was not. All right, so we're going to let our um, potatoes fry there. Oh, man, that smells really good. And now we are going to take our bowl and we're going to add our milk. Now, I am gluten-free, dairy-free, so I'm making this with – oh, Dave, can you have me an egg? Oh, no, I got it. Can you hand, uh, uh, <sighs> I am dairy free and I would like to eat this dinner. So I am using rice milk for my milk. And guess what? I just, I never get eggshells in my thing. And guess oh, what I just got one. right there. It is. I see it. Woo. There it is. So you, wow, I did good. Busy lady 35 was asking, do you add mayo to the coleslaw? I missed that part. You don't on this one. Right? Not on the savory one. On my sweet one, I do. And let me tell you, on our sweet coleslaw, you have never had a coleslaw that tasted better. I'm telling you, you just, you just won't. It's <laughs> coleslaw perfection. Okay, so now I've got my egg mixture. Now. Looks like a fire truck driving by. <laughs> Let's see if I do that. Will that work? <laughs> um, all right. I remember my dad's mom, she made fried potatoes for almost every single meal. And they were so delicious. Okay. So, National Cereal Wrapper Reuse Day. Established by the clean of everything. <laughs> Established by the clean of everything. Okay, so this is a cereal wrapper, and since I'm gluten-free, it's my Rice Chex wrapper. And just open it up like this. And pour your mashed potato flakes. And then put your seasoned salt. And I don't have garlic potatoes today because they have dairy in them. So I'm just adding garlic powder to my regular uh, potato flakes. And then I'm just going to mix this all around. 
just like so. And then this is disposable. I don't have to wash another container. Isn't that brilliant? Now, if you want to keep it closed, you can keep it closed and just shake your uh, chicken in there if you want. It doesn't matter. It's up to you. Do you rinse those bags before storing? I do not. Just It was just from cereal, so... Yeah. It's just it cereal, so it's not like it's anything... It's not like it's anything crazy. So all I do is just... Um, you can go ahead and come back up to me, Dave. So all I do is just shake out the cereal crumbs into the sink or trash. And then I just put them up in my little right here. Once again, for those of you missed right here, I have a little file folder right here. And I just fold them in half and I just store it up there. Just make it easy peasy. All right, now my potatoes are almost done. Oh, those are looking delicious. Oh, yes, they are. Is the recipe in one of the books for the potatoes? Uh, uh, the fried potatoes are in Dining Volume 1. This chicken is not in a book currently. It will be in our five ingredient book if we ever get to it. I just shared the chicken recipe in the comments, uh, but you can also go to livingonadime.com and click show notes and it's there as well. So I just had a realization. Yes. This is May. Yes. You do realize that if we're gonna get the planners done, we have to have them to the printer by July 1st. I see. I was thinking about Dining on a Dime too, which we told the printer would be there by the end of May. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> We're sort of like really running behind on stuff. Okay. Now, my potatoes are done. I am setting my oven on low, like 170. And then I'm just going to keep my potatoes warm in the oven. I'm not actually cooking them. I'm just going to keep them warm. Okay. All right, Dave, you can come back. Down. Yeah. All right, guys, who eats mayonnaise with their potatoes? Let me know. Isn't it the best ever? Okay, there's the fried potatoes. Oh, yum. Keeping them warm. Now for the chicken. Now, once again, you may say, Tara, why are you putting? butter flavored syrup in your pan. I am not, I am reusing and recycling. And what happened was I got this great big old bottle when that thing that happened coming around of oil because they had sold out. And uh, so the great big bottle of oil does not fit above in the cabinet above my um, stove. So I put it in an old syrup bottle. Did you see how I reused and recycled there? Yes. All right. And then I'm going to add just a tidbit of bacon grease. Oops, did not mean to do that. Something flew over here. Oh, I cracked my cup. Oh, my Norway cup. <gasps> no. Oh, that, that when you got in stinks, the man. Is that when you got in one of the crooked buildings? Can no, we, that one was the one that we got when we were going up to that glacier that day and got that really good prize-winning cheese. It's that steel uh, engine. It. Great. We could always fly back to Norway. We could always fly back to Norway, Dave <laughs> says, huh? Stop by Sweden on well, the way. I just said Stop hi by to, Sweden on the way. Uh, what? Just said hi to Tourit a minute ago, and I was thinking. Uh, Tourit, I just cracked my favorite Norway mug. Well, both of them are my favorite Norway mugs, but okay. So all you do is you dip your um, chicken in your egg and milk and then put it in to fry. She says so sad. And Man. Pat says now your cup is a pencil holder. Now my cup, yes, it is. Aw. Ah. We loved it in Norway. 
<laughs> yeah, I was just thinking about Norway the other day. I can't believe it's been almost two years since we've been there. Oops. Oh, dear. Forgot to put it in the milk and egg. Oh, well. Okay, let's just go back again here. Okay, we're just putting these in, and we're going to let them fry. <laughs> just like so. Just like so. I there love that go. bowl you're dipping in. Is that a family heirloom or a thrift find? <laughs> so let me tell you about that. So we've started all these new videos for five ingredient recipes and gluten-free, dairy-free channel that we started. You can come back to me, Dave, while they're frying. And I discovered all these cooking channels use clear glass bowls. So you can see, because one of my viewers was like, you need to use clear glass bowls so we can see what you're doing. And I was like, shoot, I have to uh, go to the thrift store. And so the last two weeks, we have been hopping the thrift stores looking for clear containers. And yesterday I cleared out a shelf in the garage and put all of them on there. And this one was a dollar at the thrift store. Wow. Is that not cute? So that must not have come from the thrift store that I was thinking of. Which one? The one that in seems Berthen? like the prices are almost retail. In Berthen? Yes. Yeah. No, that one came from the Ark. Yeah, that one came from the Ark. Okay, so now we're just going to let our chicken cook while we chat. This is a longer meal today, guys. I'm doing longer cooking because what's been happening is people have been getting on. They're like, well, I missed all the recipe. Well, you should have been there or been square, but. Today, that should not have been the case. I am, I am taking it out a little bit slower. And uh, then you guys can see at least some of the cooking. All right, comments, questions, <clears throat> my love muffin. Yeah. Uh, so this time 27 years ago, this is a question from Tara. Did you know that you were going to marry? Yep. But you apparently didn't because you told me later. You had no idea. <laughs> it didn't take you very long to figure it out, though, since it was just a lie. <laughs> 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 That's funny. Uh, wow, you weren't sure you were going to marry Dad? Well, I'd only been dating him like a month at this point. Not even a month. Dad two weeks. Really We'd knew. only been dating two weeks at this point. But Dad knew on the day. Did oh, you know on the day? You saw me in the apron and you thought That's her? Yep. Did you really? I told you that God told me. <laughs> So anyway. <laughs> I've been a little scared. <laughs> well, I didn't tell you then. I told you now. <laughs> you know what? I just realized this piece is going to be somewhere. Yeah, well, a piece of it hit my hand, so I think it vaporized kind of. Oh, somebody's going to cut their foot on it. That's what where, I'm saying. Wait, where is it? Uh, okay, so oh. let's see. Well, I'm going to take guy. a look, Dave, and just make sure it's on right before. there. It's over here. No, so... Melissa said, so glad you do dairy-free. My hubby can't have dairy. You can, can you most, most of the time you can substitute, right? Yeah. Even in regular recipes. Dining on a Dime Cookbook, gluten-free, dairy-free edition. This is the one for you guys. I, every recipe in here you will love. I tested them all. I got caught when that thing came around and I was having issues with finishing testing recipes because I couldn't get ingredients because everybody had cleared off the store shelves, you know, but I persevered. I went to like five different grocery stores to get ingredients and we got it done. But let me tell you, every recipe is really good. We made the gluten-free, dairy-free chocolate cake out of there for my grandma's 93rd birthday on Sunday. And nobody knew it was gluten-free or dairy-free, but I wanted a piece. So I made it for me. But everybody loved it, and you said it was super moist. Yep. You didn't even know. <laughs> All righty. Um, when will uh, the grocery... Oh, wait. Go back up. I just saw one. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Sorry. What? When will the grocery price increase video be out? So, Ruth, 
I was working on that today and it is going to be out on Friday. And I, let me tell you guys, when my grocery price increase comes out on Friday, I got something to say about this. So you guys may want to watch because I have seen article after article and I've had several people send me articles saying, hyperinflation is on the way. Grocery prices are soaring. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go check for myself. And I did on Saturday morning, I went and checked for myself and you will be shocked. So, yes. So Elizabeth said, Elizabeth Polk said, Friday's our wedding anniversary, 12 years. He's been putting up with my shenanigans. Aww. <laughs> See, with us, we're not quite sure which of us has been putting up with more shenanigans. <laughs> uh. Okay, I'm flipping it over now. Here, Dave, come show flipping it over. So Karen noticed that the display in the microwave appears to be blinking. Oh, uh, actually, the camera and the uh, microwave. Okay, Dave. Now you can come back. There, there's a technical thing that makes it look like it's flashing, but it's not. <laughs> but Tara solved the problem for you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Well, so would you right guys here. believe, huh? Also happened on my camera, the, blinking. the blinking happens on, oh yeah. So would you guys believe the stupid microwave is broken again? <gasps> this is what, microwave number what, six? We haven't even had this for like three months, have we? Uh, is this like our sixth microwave? We've been in this house 10 years and it's like our sixth microwave, I think. Is that what? Something like that, yeah. Three months it, old. This thing isn't even three months old. I am so hacked. <laughs> yeah, it, it still cooks, but it makes the way the beeper doesn't work. And Dave or BJ thought he saw it flash the other day. And so, like, yeah, well, I was thinking about it's GE. And we've bought the same one again, even when we had some trouble because it's the, it, it matches the, we didn't want to have to completely redo all the frame on the back of the kitchen behind it. But also, there are hardly any white ones available now. Well, and so I wanted white, but now the stove's about ready to go. Microwave's going again, so I may just have to go in and buy. I don't want to buy all new stainless steel appliances for a house that I'm getting ready, that I want to sell. And so it's like we need to replace the carpet and we need to replace the stove, but... I don't want to do that for a house because what happens is people in Colorado, when they buy a house, they come in and they put in all new appliances, all new carpet. They put in wood floors. It's absolutely insane. It's absolutely ridiculous. But like 90% of the people, when they move into houses in Colorado, they go in and change everything. So, yeah. <laughs> Miss, do you remember when David Letterman would throw appliances off the roof of the TV studio? <laughs> I, I think we should do. I think but, we should haul the microwave up on the roof and do that. But Biddy Frog seventy three says they might send you a new one free. I well, don't know. The truth is, it's been like three months, hasn't it? Yeah, it's I mean, only it been, a been few very months. long. But this time I didn't buy the warranty because previously we had bought them from Best Buy, and I found out that the warranty was pretty much useless. And so got tired of arguing with them over the warranty, and I decided I'm just not going to buy it there. But I was thinking. Seems like the extended warranties on them haven't really worked out for us. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. I did wonder though, because a couple times we sometimes we run a fan at night, and a couple times we've noticed that the fan Please. sort of cuts out halfway and then comes back on. And so I was wondering if it could be we're having power sources. power issues. Although in the past we had all the the appliances die at once, but I think that was at a thunderstorm. Uh, and since then, the other ones have been okay. So, Peggy, I ordered your book. I'm waiting to go grocery shopping to stock my pantry until a book arrives. I agree with no food shortages. I have good stock of staples purchased on sale so I can shop my pantry. Yay. Ooh. Yeah, we found that, like, there were a couple of things like chocolate chips, right? I'm not supposed to say that yet. Don't give away. 
Recording! Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. <laughs> there are secrets in the food prices are rising video on I Friday. See. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Spoiler! I should have said spoiler alert. <laughs> um, they're tiny. Dave, I think the laundry basket is back behind now. Maybe. Turid says my microwave is from 1989. You know what's funny about that, Turid, is there's a point where Taro bought a new toaster, and we've been through dozens of toasters since then. And if we had, we were always thinking it'd be great if we could just keep a toaster from the old days. I, I've been tempted to go to the thrift store and see if I can find like a 1950s or 60s toaster because I am so sick of toasters not toasting evenly. Honestly, what Thank is you? Just so, busy, yeah. so busy lady 35 was asking on the chicken, how long do you fry it on each side? I fry it until it's golden. I don't know. It's been what, maybe five minutes on each side? Come here, Dave. Show her what it looks like. Man, it sure smells good. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. So, oops. Can you see that? Yeah. So that's about what it's like, okay? It smells really now, good. <laughs> normally, you would just serve this to your family. But because I'm doing the show and we're waiting just a little bit, I'm putting these on a tray to keep them warm in the oven, okay? And then I'm gonna do the rest. All right, out. Uh, you can tell Jack already wants one. Huh? Jack already wants some. You already want some? Are you starving to death? Wait, so are these Parmesan or what? No, what these are garlic. Oh. Ooh. Does garlic. that sound delicious? Yeah. Does garlic sound delicious? Okay, just a minute. Let me cook these and then I'll give you a couple of these, okay? Aw, thanks. <laughs> now, you need to tell all the kids out there, Jack, what is Sunday? It's the most important day of the year. Give mom all the kisses she wants day. Give mom all the kisses she wants day. <laughs> Apparently. And what do kids all around the world need to do on Sunday? They need to give their mom all the kisses she wants, don't they? <laughs> right? And make their mom breakfast in sure. bed. Right? Wow, Sherry, Tara is exactly the same way. She says, I like the white. I have white, loved it, have stainless now, and it's always fingerprints and smudges. Yes. Also, I did have the GE oven in the range microwave, and it caught on fire. Oh, GE over the range microwave. Wow. No fault of ours. We were not even using it at the time. Wow. Yeah, ours, for a long time, we uh, we had, in the earlier ones, we had uh, some kind of a service plan. I, oh, it was with the house. And there's a plastic vent cover inside there that has one screw holding it on. And when you open and close the door a lot, sometimes it breaks the, the little thing that was holding the screw. So I would say, can you just send me the part and I'll put it on there? And they're like, no, we have to send a service tech out. And so they would want to send a service tech from Denver 40 miles away. And I was thinking, you know, you could just send me the part. And you guys would save a lot of money on the warranty, but they said they have to do it because they want to make sure it's actually broken. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. I'll send you a picture, but. Ah, oh, Denise. So when Tara turns the chicken over, is she flipping the bird? <laughs> <laughs> wow, That's Denise. You must you must be flush with chocolate today. <laughs> Miss T, uh, you make mom breakfast in bed, gentlemen. <laughs> of course, you better make mom breakfast in bed. Uh, no. uh, somebody wants to know, is this skillet expensive? I have no idea. It's my grandma's from the 1960s. It's called, hey, what's the title on the on the top? I think on the lid handle there it says something maybe. Salad master. Salad master. So Norma I wants to know if you anymore. cut your tenders or if you buy them already as tenders. These ones I had bought already because they were actually cheaper than the chicken breasts. These were <laughs> these were on sale for $4.99 for three pounds. And if I would have known there was going to be a chicken shortage, this was just two weeks ago when I got them. If I would have known there was a chicken shortage, I would have bought all they had. What is up with but, all the food shortages everywhere? But <laughs> is there a food shortage? I proved that wrong on 
Monday's, Monday's video. Mom said she thinks people are just saying there's food shortages, but there's not actually food shortages. <laughs> I mean, so there are those people freaking out about it. It's just because so people need something to freak out about. Now they don't have that thing going around, so they need something else to freak out about. So now it's food shortages. Just saying meteors hasn't so <laughs> we're getting a lot of questions about the microwave. So what happened is one day BJ was sitting at the couch within just view of the microwave, but we have these really bright TV lights and I and they do there's a reflection sometimes from certain angles. But anyway, he said, what we, they, we heard this really weird sound, and he said, oh, it flashed. Yeah, so ever cool. since then, I've been kind of testing it, and I've never seen it flash. So I'm not sure if it flashed or if it was like a reflection of the lights in the glass. But in any case, it it seems like it's working okay, but <clears throat> it's the sound part that's supposed to beep at the end either beeps really quiet or doesn't beep at all. And well, sometimes I've also been sitting there when halfway through while I'm <clears throat> cooking something, it'll just shut off. See, I haven't seen that yet, but yeah, like <clears throat> I would just stand here doing it. But it had a uh, just turn off, and it's really alarming. <laughs> well, Paula in Canada had asked if it could be somebody accidentally turned off the sound. Well, it could. It would be cool if that was it, but unfortunately, it makes this kind of pitiful sound like a toy that's like got a battery going on or something mm. or it doesn't make any sound so yeah see busy lady 35 says i'm right people need something to freak out about they need to turn off the news i'm telling you turn off the news now i did on monday's video are there food shortages because everybody keeps saying there's food shortages food shortages ah the sky is falling listen i think you need to be prepped and prepared for any kind of emergency Okay, anything. But right now, there is not food shortages. Now, there was a shortage of boneless, skinless chicken breasts. But that was the only thing that there was a short of at, at the store. And I got all these people that are like, well, you went on Saturday morning when they were stocked. Guys, when that thing going around last year in the beginning of April, when everybody started freaking out and clearing the shelves, when you went on Saturday morning, there was nothing to put on the shelves. That is a food shortage. Going on Saturday morning after they have stocked yeah, I is just... not a food shortage. You don't go shopping on Friday night and Sunday night or Saturday night for that matter. Why? Because everybody and their dog goes shopping on the weekends. And of course, their shelves are always empty. They were empty before that thing happened last year. If I would go shopping on Friday or Saturday or Sunday night, there would be nothing on the shelves. Because everybody <clears throat> just goes shopping on those days. It's just common sense. Actually, it's funny because I worked at a grocery store for eight years in high school and college. And um, people would always say, wow, it's always so busy at this store. And I was thinking that's because you came when everybody else comes. Well, we find a lot of, we tend to shop at times that are not not that many other people shopping. So uh, because of that, it's not that busy. So it's the same if you come, like Sundays tend to be one of the busiest days at a grocery store. So if you come Sunday night, it's gonna look like a bomb went off in there and all the shelves are gonna be empty. But that's not because of a shortage. Yeah, that's because the, the stock crew hasn't been there to replenish the, well, and, the run of the store. Well, and part of the problem with the stores is people don't want to work. Why? Because they're getting more money on unemployment than they are getting working. So a lot of these stores are having issues. It's not a food shortage. It's a lazy people problem. People don't want to work for a paycheck because they can get more mooching off the government than they can working. So, you know... That's not a food shortage, but toilet paper and water, people go crazy. I know, I know, it's, <clears throat> it's nuts. Well, and we've noticed, this is one reason why we talked about uh, being prepared for emergencies is we've noticed that when there's a hint that something strange might happen, people just destroy the store. Like there was, there was flooding here in 2013 and, and truly it ended up being a fairly big deal. I mean, a really big deal. <clears throat> But one town that got cut off, like immediately people, a, a small number of people ran to the store and cleaned it out completely. 
And I was thinking, wow, like don't panic. Because one thing, I didn't realize this <clears throat> until last year when the toilet paper thing happened that a lot of people only keep like three rolls of toilet paper in their house. And we always keep a stash. I mean, not because we were that worried about it, but it's Because I don't like going grocery shopping. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess when we were in Europe, a lot of things you'd walk to the store like one block away and buy it. So maybe you could buy smaller amounts of things then. But here, it's it's a pain to go to the store. So we tend to buy enough to not have to buy it for a while. Darlene says in South Carolina, there's 80,000 jobs available and 30,000 are still in unemployment. Ridiculous. I know. McDonald's, Pat says, $15 an hour and a $500 bonus. They are begging people to work. And... It has absolutely nothing to do with food shortages at all. And we did a video on pizza delivery guys making $40 an hour People didn't when our son it. was doing it. People didn't believe us. They were like, there's no way. This is not possible. Well, not where I live. And you know what? I had three to four times the amount of people say yes. And I had a couple of pizza um, uh, shop owners say yes. We are begging for pizza delivery drivers and we are paying them really well because we can't get anybody here to drive delivery for us. It's absolutely crazy. So Mrs. T, our Aldi is hiring at $15 an hour. I know. I mean, those are teenage jobs for $15 an hour. My first teenage job was $3. Yeah. But <laughs> Melissa. Get it together. <laughs> Let me see what Melissa, Melissa? scroll down. Yeah. She said, food prices are outrageous. I went to the store for chicken. I walked out with Cornish hens for $1.50 a piece. Same thing, but smaller. I bought two <clears> pounds, <throat> stocked up for the price, 2.5 pound bag of chicken. We're going to talk about that on Friday's show, food prices. So you guys, you guys need to watch the well, show on Friday. Actually, Melissa, you, you got the book from out of Goshen, right? When you get it, look in it, because one of the things we talk about is, um, you can always get better prices if you kind of sort of stockpile a little bit to, to take advantage of the sales and then not ever buy anything when it when you just walk into the store and it's expensive. Because a lot of stuff, like here, a lot of stuff looks really expensive if you just go in and buy it like today to say, decide I want this and go buy it then. Mm -hmm. But if you buy it, things that you normally use, you can get a, a deal if you buy a head. So the book has mm -hmm. a whole lot of stuff about that in there. So yay. <laughs> What's funny is <clears throat> uh, Tara said she thought that the, there was a talk about a shortage of chicken. And she said she thought it was because it was a big freeze in Texas. And I said, well, why don't they just put them in the truck and call it frozen chicken? <laughs> I know if you're a farmer, I know why they don't do that. I just, I'm, I was. I don't know why there's. It. I don't know why they're saying there's a shortage of chicken. The only thing I've heard so far is that when that Texas freeze went through, that it hurt in Arkansas and Mississippi and all those places where they have a bunch of chicken, that it did something to the. I guess killed the chickens because they weren't prepared. I don't know, but um, yeah. So. I don't know. That's the only thing I've heard. If anybody knows, tell me. But <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, okay. So let me get the last batch in here. Okay. Any other questions while I'm doing up the last two little chickens? Now, normally I use a bigger pan than this guy, so it takes me about half this time, but I was just using grandma's pan for the show just to make it look all cool. <laughs> um, and do all that. But, guys, you know, here's the thing. We know that... There are eb ebbs and flows to things like food shortages. Um, the Bible is very specific that eventually there's going to be massive <clears throat> famines. 
and massive food shortages, and it's going to take a day's wages to pay for a loaf of bread. So we know it's coming, but the food shortages aren't here yet. Okay, so national, reuse your cereal box insert day. See how nice and neat that was, and I just throw that away, and I've reused and recycled. So Angie says tomorrow's my birthday. <gasps> Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Angie. Angie. <laughs> Do we need to sing happy birthday to her? Sure. Okay, here we go. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, birthday dear Angie. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Oh, it's going <laughs> to <gonna> blow. <laughs> Somebody asked if we found a house yet. No. One came up Friday. We were super excited, all ready to run up there to go look at it in Wyoming. And it had no internet. And even Elon Musk wasn't going to have internet until next year. And so that was a bomb. Another one came up today up there. <laughs> um, another one came up today and... It's really nice, but it has no trees. And trees is like my big thing. I really, after living in a house with no trees for 10 years, I really would like to have it's trees. It's depressing having no nature. Or it is depressing not having nature. Although this house that came up today backs up to BLM land and you could go snowboarding, snow, or not snowboarding, snow, snow, uh, this, that one that came up just before the show. I would totally go. Um, and the other thing is, it's at really expensive. It's like oh. really expensive. Good but house off grid. nothing else, we can't find anything else because there's nothing available. So we'd have <clears> to get a loan and we want to stay debt free. And I don't know if we want to do that or not. We're trying to decide how desperate we are. Um, the oh, grid says, just got back from the grocery store in time to catch your show. Yay. $2.89 for boneless, skinless chicken. See? Rob's my man. He, <laughs> he's right there. Did you like my comment, Rob? <laughs> I left a comment on his show today. Um, people are rasping him about his. By the way, I think your porch looks very nice. And I think it's brilliant using it as sort of a mini greenhouse. And you know what you could do in the winter? You could get some more of those panels and panel it in and have a full greenhouse in the winter. And you could grow your lettuce like an enclosed porch. You could grow your lettuce like in a greenhouse type thing, even more than a um, even more than cold frame. Free says no debt. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh, what a question. Hello. Um, welding the van. Oh, I don't even want it. those. I feel so bad for out of Goshen. They, uh, they've had one thing after another. <laughs> you guys are as bad as us. I feel so bad. Um, why do we want to move? Because I want some peace and sanity in my life. The house that we live in right now is backed by six other houses behind us. And there is 12 dogs on any regular day and up to 20 dogs when the neighbors are illegally breeding their animals. So they just bark constantly. <laughs> it's continual barking. And we we've not ever lived in a neighborhood like this, but this one we actually paid extra to have the biggest lot, which is not a very big lot. But um we got it a is, quarter acre. But all the houses are really, really close together. And so, and all the ones around us are two story and they all have dogs that bark and they just leave them out all day. A lot of, and it's not all of them barking at the same time, but there'll be like two to five of them barking at a time, right? Yeah. And it kind of reflects off the houses and just, you know, there was a time where we lived in Manhattan, Kansas at a house that was near the Fort Riley artillery range where they were, you know, shooting targets with tanks all the time and it would shake everything. And, it's the same kind of uh, it's the same kind of weird stress, like when the dogs are constantly barking all day long. And like on the weekends, it's getting horrible now because the neighbors they go off to their games with their kids and all kinds of stuff, and they just leave their dogs outside and they think there's nothing wrong with it. Well, then the other neighbors are outside all playing, and the dogs are all barking at them. I mean, 
I'm not exaggerating. It'll be five to six hours on the weekends at a time. Dogs just continually barking, 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 barking. And, and then the other thing is we have an HOA, so we can't do anything. And like when we went to Europe for seven weeks, our yard got out of control for weeds in the backyard. Only in the garden, though. The mowing was being done. And our neighbors took pictures and turned us into the HOA in yep. our backyard. That is just wrong. Wait, what? We think they did. We did. Well, how did no. they know that they? somebody had to turn us in? Well, we can, they can't see, see over the fence. We did see multiple times someone would pop up over the fence. Yeah. Yeah. So somebody had to turn us in. But because their houses look, because they have two-story houses and we have a ranch, they look down into our yard. So if our yard is enough to spiffy for them. So Kimberly, the HOA doesn't handle the dogs and the police the in, our, in our town, the police don't really care about the dogs. And I mean, there's a, there are, there's a city ordinance, a town ordinance against letting them bark all the time, but they don't care. So, mm -hmm. so if I were to become mayor, I would say you have to get your dog trained. So what we, people. we kind of figured that the way, the best way to handle it would be to, to just move away from it. Um, because it seems like our neighborhood is really attracting people that want to have sort of status dogs, like dogs that they have. And I don't know, maybe they love the dogs, but the dogs spend pretty much all day outside alone. And so I think that's mostly a, our area in Colorado has a lot of keeping up with the Joneses thing. So a lot of people do things because it's kind of expected of them, even if they don't really like it. <clears throat> so I think a lot of the dogs are kind of, you know, people have them because you're something wrong with you if you don't have a dog. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, but the other thing is that our, we'd like to, a lot of what we're trying to do with the show and videos and, and the book publishing, the business has kind of pushed us into a much smaller space in the house. Cause yeah, when we bought the that house, was the next thing I was going to say, we we've run out of room for our books. When we bought the house, uh, we didn't intend, we didn't know that this was going to happen. And now let's see, I can't remember how many square feet. Uh, I think like all the garage and like 300 square feet of the house or something is all business now. And the house wasn't that big to begin with. So it would that would be helpful if we could have a little more space to have the business sort of separated from yeah. the family. Pam says I need to get my garden planted and then the fly house. I know I got my tomatoes hardening off right now outside. We can't plant here until Mother's Day, but even then here we had snow the last three years, the last week of May. So I'm not in a huge hurry to get a garden in, but I was actually planning tomorrow to put in the onions Wait, and get those you done. Your backyard? Um Huh? The HOA limits what you plant in yeah. your backyard. Yeah. Why? That's your I know. backyard. It's your backyard. You, you should be able to put whatever you want. I mean, you were running around making scandalizing everyone. That would be. Well, if I'm running around naked in my own backyard, what are they doing looking in my backyard? <laughs> Actually, that would be a way to stop them well, from looking. I think maybe I should do that. I mean, uh. <laughs> What do you guys think? Should I go around naked in my own backyard? I think I should. <laughs> Just don't make me feel. Just make sure I don't hurt myself with the flopping and hitting my face. Wow, mom. Wow. <laughs> too much information. This is a family wow. show. <laughs> We're going to have to set it to mature, mom. <laughs> Grab your plate, boys. Oh, my goodness. That's yeah. Funny. The HOA... So if an HOA is there and its primary purpose is just mowing the grass and you have to pay and they mow the grass in public areas, that's probably fine. Here, the HOA has a lot, they have tons of rules and most of them don't get enforced. And what's been kind of weird is some rules get enforced heavily on certain people and then other rules don't get enforced on anyone. So it's kind of weird. It's kind of like being in a classroom where some kids get punished and others don't. And the ones that get punished aren't always doing something and the ones that don't get punished are. <laughs> so it's kind of a weird situation that way. But yeah, we, we've been in a place that was, uh, 
we've been in a place where there was no HOA and we had um, one guy who had, he had to drive past his house to get to ours and he had like broken down cars and refrigerators and things all the way out to the street. So we kind of understand why people like HOAs in a sense, but we just haven't had a good experience with this one, so. <laughs> Good night, Angie. Happy birthday. Well, and that's part of our problem with Colorado is we can't find a place that doesn't have an HOA. And so that's a little bit of a problem. Somebody said, how many people am I feeding? That's a lot of chicken. I'm feeding four to six. I don't know if BJ and Ellie are going to be home to eat or not. Well, BJ doesn't live here, but he's here all the time. <laughs> So I don't know if he's going to be eating with us or not. And uh, so I don't know if I'm feeding four or six, but we always, I always cook at least double. So we have leftovers for the next day, either for lunch or the next dinner, depending on if I'm sick and I don't feel like cooking. So um, <gasps> what? Joanne, microwave hint, hold number two button down for 10 seconds. To do what? Well, I wonder if it would do it. I wonder if she's talking about like a, okay, like a, a reset. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That was didn't do more anything. Than ten seconds. Um, sometimes you anything. can. Sometimes, yeah, you can have a reset. What do you call it? Oh. No. What's the brand? Well, GE. Yeah. So, ooh, I wonder. I think she's talking about the chicken, but Stacy said that that would be good with sweet potatoes too. Oh yeah, that'd be really good. Yum. Yeah, that'd be really good. Yeah, that would be delicious. Actually, I got a sweet potato over there. Should have made it for me. Um. So anyway, we've been trying to move for a long time. I mean, the regulars are probably sick of this story, but for everybody who's new, we've been trying to move for five years couldn't find well first we didn't have enough money then we finally had enough money and then we were getting really serious and that thing hit and then we couldn't look at houses so we literally started looking at houses a week before they locked down and then they locked down and then we were going to see houses anyway <laughs> we were being rebels Oh, and the people at the houses were fine with it. Um, and so we were looking all last year here in Colorado, couldn't find anything. So in October, we started looking in Wyoming and now the big housing craziness has happened and now we can't find anything for that. So oh, that's the short story. Jen, I totally agree. Jen says, honestly, I would rather have the neighbor with the old fridge than the HOA. One thing about the neighbor with the old fridge is he was quiet and he didn't, yeah. We couldn't see his house from our house. It wasn't a problem. The issue that we had was when we needed to sell, sell our it. house, everyone that came to buy it would drive past there on the way. And we, and our agent told us that there were a lot of comments about that house when they went by. Yeah, that's one reason why we didn't, why we had such a hard time selling our house. Our old, last house was because they drove by that and nobody wanted to buy it and finally a neighbor of course after we left wow it was that still, delicious i'm gonna still try the number two button thing because out of goshen said that they tried it also and it, it did something different than what ours did so we'll try that and see yeah the, well the thing with the old guy with the car is it didn't really bother us um but i know that that's why people like here, when they were talking about, because we were hesitant to buy the house because of the HOA, but like everything here has an HOA unless it's really old. And we were okay with really old, but the really old ones were more expensive than the new ones at the time. Uh, Sorry, but the we didn't mind the guy with his stuff, although the guy that was next door to him, eventually when the, when the guy wanted to sell his house, the old guy was going to sell his house, the neighbor next door, bought it from him and then cleaned everything off because he didn't want to see it. So that was kind of cool. Yeah. But yeah. Adam yeah. Goshen says that they, um, oh, yours is a Samsung. Yeah. Ours is a G. G. So we'll, we'll still try it and see if it works, but they, 
out of Goshen tried to tip about pressing the number and I guess it did do something. So, mm. and actually maybe I should check because maybe that's a tip that maybe Joanne's tip that out of Goshen used works with Samsung. Maybe there's a different key combination mm. for our- Ooh, Debbie's from Scotland. Hello, Debbie. <clears throat> yeah, I was wondering where Debbie, we love Scotland. Scott, your body cancel anything on this display. We, uh, display when we were there last, we stayed on Loch Awe on a farm near yep. north of Glasgow, and it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was really nice. It rained. It was so beautiful. I absolutely love the rain. We don't get rain here in Colorado hardly at all. Well, you know, I don't know. I mean, we're Christians, so the way things are going in this world, we think Jesus is going to be coming back to get us any day now. So maybe we're just not supposed to move because he's saving us the hassle for moving if we're all going to be gone in six months. So who knows? <laughs> it is nice not having... Because um, moving's a pain in the butt. <laughs> I've is, done it, what, 15 times? It's horrible. It is nice not having the mortgage. <sighs> and we would like to avoid that if we buy a new one. And we, we could avoid that up to a certain point uh, because we have some money set aside for that. But... Uh, well, yeah, but the house that came up today, we'd have to get a mortgage. Yeah. I it's like super expensive. It's like, yeah. Well, and I was also thinking today, <laughs> it would be worth it to, if we found a place that we could especially be away from the dogs. But part of me was thinking, you know, this is the house that we've lived the absolute longest in. And it's there's a time where we move so much and I was thinking, wow, if we could just live in one place for a while. So in that sense. Well, we lived here 10 years. Yeah, that's no, the we did it. we've ever lived anywhere. Yep. That's and doing good. <laughs> Actually, that's double our last house. Yeah. We've never lived anywhere longer than five years. So this is the longest we've lived anywhere. Yeah. So Dan says he'd rather to have the Ozarks than Colorado. Well, I would too, if it wasn't for the heat and humidity. If it wasn't for June, July, August, and September, I would be in the Ozarks right now, but I can't handle the heat and humidity. Yeah, that's the issue for is tar can't do heat or humidity. So that kind of pretty much rules out everything east of here to the really to yeah. the Atlantic, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Um, yeah, Melissa says around here, as soon as the house is listed, it sells within a week. <laughs> that's That's a long time here. They're, they're talking hours and they are sold before they're even put on the market. Our realtor has six people waiting to look at our house even before we put on the market so he can sell it before we put it on the market. There aren't very many available here, which is kind There's of weird. There's nothing. But when last year when we were looking about an hour and a half from here in Colorado, um, houses would come on the market and we would see it come on the market and we would get in the car right then and drive down there. And by the time we got there, it was already under contract. Yeah. And our agent told us that people were making offers on houses that they hadn't even seen because they were so desperate to buy a house. Yep. And I think I mentioned before, but we, um, they were taking pictures that made spaces look really huge, but you get to the house and it was really small. And I was thinking, man, if you've made a, an offer on a house you hadn't even seen, that would be a, an unpleasant surprise to find out yeah. it was a third as big as you thought. Did Jack and Dave have any coleslaw? No. So here's the thing. Uh oh, My kids don't like coleslaw. I know I say everybody loves my coleslaw, except my two younger kids don't like the coleslaw. But Jack is the least picky of all my kids for eating. Kim and Ellie are the best eaters of all of them. So I'm not going to holler at him because he'll eat cucumbers and carrots and all broccoli and all kinds of other stuff. So yeah, Jennifer is near us and she says multiple offers above asking price oh, yeah. on the first day. Yeah. <laughs> it's nuts. yeah. It is. In our neighborhood, I'm not exaggerating. When I say a house will be sold in two to four hours with a firm contract in hand, it is absolutely berserk, totally berserk. But yeah, uh, Patty, I think, uh, Patty, well, Patty's in Longmont. They did they did that in Montana, making up for sight unseen. And that's a lot of people coming from a lot of places there too. We actually, we had been in, we went up to, um, I forgot which place in Montana. Bozeman. Bozeman. And it, 
wow, it was amazing. It was just like here in Colorado with people oh. just swarming in there and everything, like the town not being Bozeman able to keep up. was totally up. ruined. They oh, weren't able they to totally keep up with it. the traffic and stuff like that. And it was funny it was because the agent was telling us, oh, oh yeah, this is what you have to do to try to get a house. And we were thinking, wow, you know, that sounds like Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Stacy, we would never buy a house no. without seeing it either. And mm -mm. and even if we see it, we usually put something in the contract that if inspections show something bizarre, that mm -hmm. we're, we're not locked into it for that reason. So, because there was one house that we looked at yeah. one time, and the lady had junk practically up to the ceiling in the basement, and we put a thing in there saying we needed, we wanted to have an inspection since we couldn't see it, and it turns out half the house didn't have a foundation at all. Yeah. <laughs> like, Wow. Okay. And then yeah. also they found like an oil, an oil tank in the yard that had been leaking. And so the, the house government was going to require a, a um, they were going to require a, like a EPA, hazardous EPA yeah. cleanup and hauling it all. <laughs> they said it would cost us $50,000. The house was $75,000 and it was going to cost $50,000 in hazardous waste <clears throat> cleanup on that house with no foundation. And then we ended up having to take that lady to court because she wouldn't give us our deposit back. It was a big old mess, but. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't, a, it was a pain for us, but you know, it was interesting. The court just said, the judge just said, what, what documentation do you have? Okay, let me look at it and I'll let you know later. And then he just sent a ruling. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. And we won, of course, but yeah. Um, Oh, you should capture that one and see. I don't Very know. Good food. There was a reason Ooh. why we weren't going to go to Douglas. I don't remember what it was, but I don't remember where that is. I can't remember. Thank you, Miss C. We'll go we'll look at it. Look. Yeah, every week, every week we talk about this, and every week I get like twenty houses from people, and they're either sold, or they don't have internet, or they don't have the master bedroom on the main floor. I need the master bedroom on the main floor, or. They're too expensive to where by the time we added the shop and added a house for mom, it would be over our price then. So yeah, that's, that's part of our problem with most of those, but anyway, so yeah. Are you going to go eat that chicken? Yep, I am. Are you ready to go eat the chicken? All sure. right, guys, check out our Dining on Dime cookbooks, 25% off right now including our gluten-free, dairy-free. This was a really good gluten-free, dairy-free recipe. You can see the boys already had seconds. <laughs> At least there's a little bit still left. Yeah, so, this chicken tenders recipe is really, really good. Yeah. So. so go try it. The website or the recipe is in on our website in the link in the description below. Watch Friday. Our grocery price is rising and how bad is it? That is my video that I'm putting out. And... Yeah, see, Patty thinks we should go to Sydney, Nebraska. I thought the Where same is thing. That? But isn't it like all deserty there? It's the same weather as Colorado. I think it's like living on the plains in Colorado, but I'm not sure. I might go look again and see. But anyway. All right, guys. Thanks, everyone. Oh, thanks for the happy Mother's Day. Guys, go check out Out of Goshen. We love Out of Goshen. Well, go and check happy them out. early Mother's Day to all you moms out there. Yes. Yeah. And remember, it's give mom all the kisses she wants today. So insist on all the kisses you want. Yep. See, she's trained in that way since they were little. So <laughs> it's the, not the teenagers happening. are, ca the teenagers are catching it. on. It's not <laughs> happening. <laughs> but we're still working on it. We're, we're starting to get a little bit of resistance. Okay, a no, lot. No, you are not. No. <laughs> no kisses. Okay, give mom all the hugs she wants today. Nope, no hugs either. Nope. Good night, everyone, and bye, Turid. Do I still have to give you chicken tenders? Yeah. Yeah. Wait. Really? All right. Oh. Oh, Miller, Missouri. Yeah. That'd be nice, except for the it humidity. It was great until the Missouri part. <laughs> well, because the humidity. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Have a good night. We'll see you later. Bye.